Good evening. Happy Monday to all of you in the Emmanuel Everywhere land. Thank you guys for joining with uh, with us at Emmanuel Everywhere today. We are, are blessed to be in the land of the living today. And so we want to just uh, give God some praise for that. And with that, you know, I always got a praise break for us. Something that we can reflect and just begin to get our juices flowing for worshiping God. So this today's praise break comes from 1915 uh, in Coffee County, Alabama. And they were this town in ba Alabama, uh, which is a community that's known as the Cotton Belt. They were invaded by this bug called the bull weevil. The bull weevil, it, it, it would get infected into the, the, it would get into the cotton and it would destroy the cotton community. And because of this, they faced uh, starvation because that was their income. It was everything that they were able to produce. But instead of caving in, this community invited into it African-American scientist George Washington Carver to come to the county. And he came in and he told them these words, don't be upset uh, because you lost the whole cotton crop. Your soil is still good for harvesting peanuts. And do you know what happened? they were able to harvest a peanut crop that rescued their entire community from economic disaster. Eventually, there was an erected statue in the middle of Coffee County, Alabama, uh, to the boll weevil. Why? And why did they put the boll weevil up? Because even though the boll weevil had given them a bad break, God set it up through George Washington Carver for them to have a big break. I think the praise break moment is there is that even when everything else around you seems to be uh, awry and everything seems unsalvageable, isn't it just like God to, to use the soil that, that was your destruction to create something brand new? And I think that that's our shout, that whatever the, the, the enemy has been allowed or whatever he's torn down on this land, God can build something brand new and save anybody. And so I'm grateful for that. That's my praise break moment uh, right there. And it's not black history, but for me, it's always black history. At any rate, uh, we want to get into uh, our Monday Night Live for today. On yesterday, uh, we are in the month, well, uh, for the month of August uh, is our associate minister's time to be ministering at our church. So you're going to be hearing from our associate ministers uh, all month long. And so uh, on yesterday, we had Minister Katrina Barnes uh, preach the message, Celebrity Magnet, Getting to Where You Can See Jesus. And so I want to take that text that she used and walk us into this week on what we can further be doing to um, just go into this week with. And so let me give you that scripture that she began, and we'll just jump right in. Luke 19, beginning at the first to the 10th verse. Uh, beginning at the first verse, concluding at the 10th verse, you will find these words. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest at your home today. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus, excuse me, and he called him, excuse me, and Zacchaeus climbed down quickly and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people, but the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true 
son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. And so I want to see if we can walk this text into this week with a few points. And so if I had to put a title to what I'd be talking about today, I would call it getting above ground, getting above ground. Um, the higher ground, the higher ground in many circumstances nets an advantage in most things. Higher ground can increase vision. Higher ground can increase safety. And higher ground can introduce greater strategy. What do you mean? Well, if it's vision that you need, if you get to a higher ground, you can get to a better vantage point where you can see things clearly. Um, I'm reminded of when uh, uh, I was a kid, my dad would take me to the parades. Oftentimes I couldn't see anything and I'd be trying to, to get around people to see the parade, but my dad would put me on his shoulders. And once I got on his shoulder, I was taller than most people out there and I could see, I think there's a shout in there because wasn't, isn't, it, isn't it good to know that when you are with the father, he can always get you above your situation if you would just rest on him. Oh man, that's for somebody. You can just rest on him and get above the situation. Get on daddy's shoulders so you can change your vision so you can see clearly. Oftentimes we got to get above people. There are people who are at this level where we live in a, an age where the level of people is just rude, period. You got to get above that level. You got to have some class about you where everybody else cutting up. You got to get above that level. So one of the things that it nets uh, getting above ground, nets a good vision uh, where you can see clearly. The second is for safety. Uh, there's a getting above ground can help you in safety. Like how else could you avoid a flood or a calamity if you can't get above where the water is coming up? And so oftentimes people when these how these homes when they're when they don't make are not able to make it out uh, 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 quickly they they often escalate up into their their uh, attics and their rooftops where they can be saved but they have to get up there they have to get above the water and get above ground in order to be saved third thing is a uh, strategy in strategy and this is a a, a good example for us is if you're going to make some moves, it is getting above ground. You have the ability to make moves that are above your enemy's ability. Let me say that again. When you get above ground, you are oftentimes able to make strategic moves that are above, that are above your enemy's ability. What do I mean? One of my favorite, I'm a, I'm a Star Wars fanatic. You know, I, I grew up uh, 1977 when Star Wars came out. I was one. I was there, right there with all the little kids, getting ready to see Star Wars with my grandmother. Anyway, you know they they kind of took us through the the last three, and then they went back to the first three to give us the prequels. And so the prequels, one of the prequels that was out is is uh, Revenge of the Sith, the third one. And this is where Anakin Skywalker becomes Darth Vader. And in this, uh, he's fighting with his master, who is Obi Wan Kenobi. And Obi Wan is trying to help him, trying to save him. He spent all his life training him, but Anakin is just out to, to be a part of the dark side. has got a hold of him. Anyway, they're in this fight. And before you know it, uh, Obi-Wan, who often is, he's a teacher, wiser. So he gets above ground and he tells Anakin, It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! So as he stands above Anakin, he's at a position where nothing that Anakin can do can stop what he's able to do with his ability because he has the high ground. Any move that Anakin makes from the low ground, if he meets him, he's going to meet Doom because he has more ability at his vantage point. Oh, I don't want to tell somebody is that if you don't know the rest of the movie, Anakin, of course, tries it. And this is where he meets uh, uh, his, his meets he meets his match when he tries to go at uh, Obi-Wan and Obi-Wan tells him he has the high ground and he says you underestimate my power don't try it he jumps up and then next thing you know uh uh you know the movie takes the turn where he becomes Darth Vader 
But I believe that's something to be said is that we don't realize that with God, we have an advantage on the high ground above our enemy. We are at a place where we make our enemy's ability like nothing. All the devil can do is mess around with us down here. But if we can get above ground where God can be with us, there is no, not too many moves or, or, or none at all that the enemy can make that God can't counter. Whew, that God can't counter at his level. That shouts me. And so uh, as we go into this, I, I want to give us a few things to think about uh, this week that you can take with you as we think about uh, Zacchaeus in this text. Um, how can we be like Zacchaeus? I'm going to give you four quick ways and I'm done. How can we be like Zacchaeus? One, we have to see that we can't see him. That's number one. See that you can't see him. Who's him? Jesus. See that you can't see him. Zacchaeus, because he was short in stature, he was not able to see Jesus through the crowd. So he recognized that he couldn't see him. How many of us would be better off if we recognize the times in our lives where we can't see Jesus? You know when you can't see Jesus, when you're negative about everything, when nothing seems to be uh, all right, when you're angry, when you want to lash out. You should know that you're not looking at Jesus. You obviously can't see him because if you could see him, your reaction would be different. And so you've got to recognize that you can't see him. The second thing that happens is you've got to run to where you can meet him. So Zacchaeus goes ahead of where Jesus is coming. Hmm? He goes ahead of where Jesus is on his way to just so that he could meet him. I wish more of us would learn how to get ahead of where the enemy is attacking so that we can see Jesus. Sometimes you got to run a little further. You got to keep going a little bit longer. You've got to, to take a, a, a faster route so that you can get to, to, to a place where you can meet Jesus. I don't care where you got to meet him. You got to go to a place where you can meet him. And if that place is church, the church house, if that place is Bible study in the morning, if that place is prayer meeting, wherever you got to run to meet him, I remember a day that we were running all week long. We were running on Monday night if we had choir rehearsal. We were running on Tuesday night if we had youth fellowship. We was running on Thursday nights if we had something else going on. Wednesday night was prayer meeting. Uh, if it was a Friday special program, we was running on Friday nights. Saturday, we might get some rest. And then Sunday, we running all day. We ran to where we can meet Jesus. Second, the third thing is get in a position where he can see you. Not enough to run to meet him. You've got to put yourself in a position where he can see you. Zacchaeus climbed that tree to put himself in a position not only to see Jesus, but immediately looking at the text, Jesus saw him. If you can put yourself in a position where Jesus sees you, he sees you by your worship. He sees you by how you pray. He sees you by your attitude. He sees that you've climbed above your situation and he sees you. Oh, I'm talking to somebody who, who's had it bad. Maybe your job has laid you off. Maybe, maybe, maybe your rent is overdue. You've got to get into a place where Jesus can see you, get on your knees and worship him regardless. Be like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? And you get in that position where he can see you. And look what happened. Jesus called Zacchaeus by his name. He knew who he was. Whew, that shouts me to let somebody know that God knows exactly who you are. Put yourself in a position of worship where you can be seen giving glory to God and let him call your name. Call your name into whatever he has for you. Call your name into a new position. Call your name because when he calls your name, they gonna call your name. Those people who are looking for somebody to hire, they gonna call you. They gonna call your name. Doctors, when they look at your test results and see that they're negative now, when they were positive, he, they gonna call your name. When you call his name, he gonna call your name. He's going to make sure somebody calls your name. That shouts me. And last thing, last thing. So these three things first, see that you can't see him, run to where you can meet him, get into position where he can see you. And the third thing, 
is let them come home with you. I, I, you know, it don't have to be that deep. Let them come home with you. The very fourth thing that happens in the text is uh, Zacchaeus, he sees Zacchaeus, calls Zacchaeus by name. Zacchaeus tells him to come down and says, take me home with you. I can stay here all day long. If a preacher can't blow, close with, let him come home with you, then I, I don't know who should be preaching. But if Jesus comes home with you, if Jesus comes home with you, salvation comes in. If Jesus comes home with you, lost sheep are found. If Jesus comes home with you, this last piece that I'll close with will shout us to a close. If Jesus comes home with you, the address changes from your house to his house. Whew. Let me give it to you because I can't hold myself on this one. If Jesus comes home with you, your address changes from your house to his house. I'm reminded of a movie, another movie, 1987. Harrison Ford stars in the movie uh, as the president, and the movie's called Air Force One. Uh, the movie's about a hijacking of the president's plane, Air Force One. Harrison Ford is the hero. He's trying to make sure that they make it out okay. He's doing everything that he can do to, to try to rescue and, and not have the, the, the ship, the, uh, the, the plane taken over, and uh, he winds up in peril. At the end of the movie, Harrison is dangling on the line from the airplane. And Air Force One is headed toward disaster. And this other commercial plane is trying to rescue him. It's an MC-130. And this airman is out there trying to reel Harrison Ford into the second plane or else Air Force One is going to go into the ground. And so uh, as he's trying to reel him in, uh, we see that the Air Force One crashes. Everybody on the ground thinks that the president is gone. They don't even know what happens. They know, they know that they're trying to rescue the president, but they don't know what's happening. And so there's a little bit of radio silence. And then all of a sudden, they hear the guy come on, uh, the, the, mar the marshal come on or whoever's in, in the plane. And they've actually pulled Harrison Floyd into the other C-130 plane. But what happens that shouts us to a close is uh, they give the plane the call sign is what well, was Liberty 24. But as soon as the president gets on board, they change the call sign. Liberty 24 is changing call signs. Liberty 24 is now Air Force One. Let me give you the importance of why it is. The call sign is important because the person of importance who owns the name of that Air Force One plane has now come inside of that plane. The president now being on board of that commercial plane now makes that plane Air Force One. What shouts me is when Jesus enters the house, it goes from being our house to his house. There is a call sign change when Jesus steps on board. And I just want to tell somebody, when you let him on board, everything that you got gets better. It gets better in the eyes of everybody around you. That was just an ordinary C-130 until the president stepped on board. And when the president stepped on board, everything about what that plane was made of, even its name, became something different. And what shouts me is the day that you and I accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, there was a call sign name change. And all I wanna tell somebody is when he gets to the house and he comes inside of your house, things ought to change. When he came inside and started talking to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus immediately knew I can't be different because Jesus did. He said, you know what? I, 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 whoever I done wrong, I got to do right by them. It's something about Jesus on board that makes all of us better, all of us different. All of our reactions change. All of our mannerisms change. All about how we treat people change as soon as Jesus comes on board. And all I want to ask somebody today is if you're trying to get above ground, you ought to get above ground and see Jesus because if you see Jesus and he sees you and he calls your name and you take him home with you, the rest is history or his story. And the rest is salvation for us all because some glad morning he will call our name and we are all headed above ground.
That's all I got for you today. I pray that that blesses somebody today and that you uh, think about that message from Zacchaeus a little differently. Take it into this week. And may you always know that getting above ground has many benefits. So that's all I got for you today. We're going to have our prayer request prayer on Wednesday. Please get your prayer requests in. It's starting to pick up. We're getting a lot of people putting in prayer requests, and that's exactly what we want. And we got a lot of people joining in live with us as well. And so if it picks up any more than this, what I think I'm going to do is open up our Zoom so that you can be a part of the prayer, prayer room, meaning that you come in actually and pray with me. Uh, and so we want to start doing some things that we can just bring in more community together. And so that's coming. So we got Renaissance Faith up. Uh, we got our services online now. And we have some more programming that we're working on in the future. And uh, if you didn't catch the marriage, uh, the, the, the marriage uh, webinar that we had, please go back and take a look. I, I, I pray it was, it was a blessing to be there with such amazing couples. So God is still doing something special. We know that. And so uh, let's keep riding. God bless y'all tonight.